Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Deeksha Pandey and you are watching Urogynecology for Beginners. Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Pandey Pretty. Welcome to Urogynecology for Beginners. Hi, I'm Dr. Monica. Welcome to Urogynecology for Beginners. Before we start the session, uh, we'll ask Pandey what is the update. Actually, Pandeep. I want to start the same thing. Ma'am. Okay, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, many of the uh, doctors, they are messaging me and asking me, uh, give the further updates and they want to extend the date of um, applica application. So we decided to extend till uh, December 15th. So you never December asked me, you decided. <laughs> so Pranthip has already decided, don't include me. Okay, and so, one huh. more thing is... Um, so you have extended, let it be clear, I also want to know, you have extended it till? Uh, 15th of December, 15th 2024. Of December. Okay. And uh, next thing, uh, many of them ask me, when will be the interview? Who mm -hmm. has applied, they are asking this question. Yes. And the interviews will be held in the second week because we are extending this uh, uh, application date as well as uh, many people will be busy during Christmas and New Year's. Including us. <laughs> in New Year's. <laughs> so we are uh, conduct, probably conduct in second week of January. And uh, one more thing is um, many people they just uh, want to know whether their applications are reached and they want some uh, uh, contact details from the administrative office. Actually, we have given in our last video itself on the thank you slide, there will be a uh, number, Nishan, this number will be there. And today also we will put in our uh, last slide. Our, uh, last, so whenever the thank you slide comes, you pause it a bit there. There one number is there, that is the contact number for anything if you want to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he might not be, he's a very busy guy. So sometimes he might not be able to pick up your phone. So have patience, send him a message once or twice. And if still you do not get the answer, you can you always can tell to Pranthip yeah. and we'll see that the work is done. Uh, yeah, and you can message me in case if he is not reachable, definitely I will try to reply to your message. So with this uh, update, let's move on to uh, some Today's studying thing session. today, academic <laughs> session today. And one session which um, uh, they too wanted to do, actually I was feeling little exhausted doing because so many spaces we have already done. But still, how this many spaces waiting. are? Four are there. No? Four are still waiting. So we thought two, two we can combine in one now because it is taking a lot of time and sometimes we are not in that mood to read anatomy also. So today, which one? Sixth and seventh space, seventh space we are doing today. Vesico vaginal and uh, recto vaginal space. Okay. These so we'll start small, with but important spaces. Huh. One is in front of vagina. One is behind the vagina. Space. So let's first discuss about the vesico vaginal space. space. Yes. Yeah, you can start. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ladies so first. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, as you already said, ma'am, it is in front of the vagina. Vesico vagina. Vesico vagina. The vesical part is the bladder and the urethra, and the lower part is vagina, ma'am. So, where we actually use this space is for cystocele repairs, ma'am. Mm. During cystocele repairs, when we touch hold the cervix and we give a 1.5 centimeter above the anterior lip of cervix, we give an incision, semicircular incision. They will find some bright bright white tough like standing fibers yes. as you say ma'am <laughs> standing fibers and we cut this pubo cervical fibers uh, and we enter into a loose areolar connective tissue space hmm. which is evascular this space is called vesico vaginal space so uh, one thing i wanted to make clear i don't know whether we have discussed it or not every time when i show you hysterectomy and when i teach you hysterectomy also vagina i say that if you are in doubt, just make it a rule from external or so you just move 1.5 centimeters up, up and uh, give the incision. Have you ever wondered why it is so? Because the cervical length, if you remember, is 2.5 centimeters normal. 1.25 centimeters of it, it is supravaginal and 1.5 centimeters vaginal portion of the cervix. So if we consider normal anatomy, actually, if we want to reach that space, uh, vesico vaginal no, space good. early we have to give incision around 1.25 to you can say 1.5 but we are not doing hysterectomies for nulliparous women for young girls so anatomy gets a little altered when the lady is has given pregnant. birth has become pregnant little hypertrophy yeah. some kind of trauma infection will be there even if you say cervix is totally normal no. it will be little more bigger than. in size and in prolapse cases more so more cervix can be elongated so 1.5 centimeter is just the portion of the vagi vaginal cervix portion. which is in the vaginal, vaginal, vaginal portion. portion of the cervix or portion vaginal is of the so we start from there 
and cut first the standing fibers and then enter the loose area tissue of vesico vaginal space. Yes. Now one thing here important is if suppose the cervix is long. So what we will have to do the cutting the uh, like uh, tough dissection that sharp Pure dissection cervical. part will be little yeah, longer yeah, yeah. as compared to the loose area yes. tissue. Yeah. But when cervix when you see from above or when you say about opening the UV fold that does not change because the reflection of peritoneum at the UV loose fold yes. of peritoneum or the UV fold is the at the level, level of internal os from where the cervix starts. So. so when we are dissecting onto the space our aim is to reach the peritoneum mm -hmm. and enter the peritoneum, peritoneum. peritoneal okay. cavity open the anterior pouch anterior pouch mm -hmm. so i hope this area so this is mostly avascular yeah, area but we do some things to make it more yeah. avascular and to create That's the because. it is loose area yeah, tissue. tissue so we do something so that it becomes a bubble, Bu bubble what do we do <laughs> we will inject um, diluted vasoconstrictor mostly uh -huh. adrenaline and one thing more diluted adrenaline which cold is saline. with cold, cold saline. saline so coldness also will do little That's vasoconstriction right. as well as adrenaline itself is a vasoconstriction That's and if you have not yet seen us go back to Pranleep's video mm -hmm. where he has told in detail about dilution because that is one of the commonest query I give uh, yes. following the videos yes. so we have done a, a detailed detailed videos you can understand how adrenaline is diluted for me Two things are important, adrenaline is vasoconstrictor, cold saline, cold saline increases the effect. Okay, so it has two purposes, can you repeat Monica? One is for vasoconstruction ma'am uh -huh. and other is to create the bubble, bubble of safety. safety. Though it is an avascular space but whenever we say avascular, it doesn't mean that there is no vessel. Major blood vessels are not there but small capillary twigs, small venules will always be there. Okay, So it will control bleeding from there and it will create a bubble of safety because of its volume so that uh, the bladder will be pushed up and uh, this uh, cervix will be down. So that you have lot of space where safely you can dissect. I'll ask you one more question. What is the sign we have named when you dissect? The, uh, when you make the bubble of safety, I know this. Uh, tell me. Lychee sign. Lychee sign. So I don't know how much you are, you know about lychee. In North India, lychee is very common fruit in the summers. So it is like uh, South Indians can uh, think of rambutan. Rambutan. The same kind of consistency you call it. And for uh, just easy understanding and teaching the students, we call it look at the lychee sign, sign and then open it. Now they will go watch back your videos to see that lychee sign. I thought they will eat lychee. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, we told that uh, what are the procedures we will use in this ah, space. Yes. One is cystocele repair, yes. uh, with the native tissue repair we will do one and then the previously we used to use meshes, mm -hmm. so now we are not using that anymore. And, uh, so for anterior vaginal wall cyst also, yes, anterior vaginal wall cyst also, even urethral diverticulum. Yeah, no, urethral, Joe, urethral diverticulum will start at urethra, but when in distance, yes. it goes into the same because there it gets the place to expand. Yes. So, all these um, surgeries we will get to dissect the same plane. Okay. A more question you asked us in every surgery and you forgot to ask us now. What is that question? What is the angle of the surgery <laughs> to assess? So I thought it will be hard. So very good question. So tell me what should be the angle of? Angle should be? 15 degrees, 0 to 15 degrees. Zero to 15. So here also Monica, the important thing is vesico vaginal <laughs> space. When you are doing, you might be doing it for strictomy yes. also. Or you might be doing it for cystocele yes. repair. So you get the answer for both. Infiltration is in the same plane. But when we want to uh, do the dissection, hysterectomy, yes. then the, play, the angle should be? 15 to 30, 30 degrees. degrees. When we are doing cystocele repair, then zero it should be 15. 0 to 15 degrees. So the space is the same. So, Dr. Monica, for the sake of our viewers, can you explain that on our MIA model? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So this is our posho vaginalis part of the cervix, which is peeping out. Uh, this is the anterior lip and this is the posterior lip. So during NDVH or vaginal hysterectomy, we will give 1.5 cm above uh, this anterior lip, we will give one incision. First we will dissect by hydrodissection and then 
we will give a semicircular incision and we will cut pubocervical standing fibers. We will enter this space by uh, both sharp and blunt uh, dissection and we will reach here. So, here is the internal os where we can see here is the internal os and here we will open UV fold of peritoneum to open the anterior pouch. Thank you Monica, uh, that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Sir. So as you two were discussing and showing the space here, I got a call and we have some more cases pending. So we will have to go there. So what I have decided without your permission that we will do only one space today because already that much time has been yes. taken and it yeah, will do if you don't mind we will do the other because I have to take I, both of you with me to OT now. I think our viewers will understand that we will finish that in the next video. Yes and we will do it soon. Soon. And you have to remind me that we have <laughs> yes. to do soon. Phyllis <laughs> the Okay. Okay, so we'll do it soon. So I hope you understood uh, what we were trying to tell you. And the space looks simple, looks that everybody knows it. But there are some small little understandings. If that is clear in our mind, we can definitely do a daily surgery in a much, much beautiful way. Isn't it? Yes. Okay. Then uh, we'll conclude this video. Uh, so we will conclude, but you like, share, subscribe. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. See you very soon.